So welcome everyone to Fireside Chats in February. And our title today is When Motivation Fails. So all of you who are not on this call, you know, you might have an issue with motivation. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyways, um, it's, it's a topic that we've been hearing a lot about from a lot of our clients in different classes. Um, and including ourselves, um, over the last year, 2018 was a bit of a challenging year for us. And uh, we changed a whole bunch of things. And in that process, it's really um, how do we get motivated? And what we found is that we would go back to kind of the old patterns and old ways. And that didn't work anymore. So just everybody asking us questions. We thought this is just a great, it's great title. It's up in the air for a lot of people. Uh, motivation, no motivation. How do you be with that? Mm -hmm. And we don't really have answers as such. We just have findings on our way. Yeah. We never really have answers, but sometimes we have more clarity. And this is really an, a subject where we want to play with you guys. So... Um, yeah, to begin with, let's just begin by connecting with your body and let go of any distractions that you might have in your environment. You can mute yourself and just come home to yourself, feel your feet on the floor, take some deep breaths, whatever you do to connect with your body. And just be here in this present moment with you with your body and your breath, breathing in and breathing out and allowing yourself to let go of all the busyness of the day, what's coming after this and really be present with you. Tonight is all about you and really diving deeper into this whole topic of motivation. What do you know about it? How are you when there is no motivation? What do you do? Uh, is motivation important? All of these kind of questions. And just let that settle like down into your body, deep into your bones, into your pelvis. It's not an intellectual thing. It's not an intellectual exercise that we're asking you to perform tonight. It's really getting connected to the essence of who you are and why you're here. What is it that you're doing here in this world, in this life? Um, what is, yeah, what's fun for you, okay? What do you want to experience? What do you choose? Mm -hmm. Cool. <sighs> Are you a little bit more here now than you were two minutes ago? A little bit more, cool. And just for a little bit of housekeeping as well, if you want to ask a question, we like to open it up. So just kind of wave at us or show us that you want to ask a question by starting to talk because we don't have a raise your hand feature here. No, we do. But we do? Just unmute yourself and ask the question. We don't see everybody, so we don't necessarily see you waving. So just go <clears throat> and ask your question <laughs> yeah. or a comment. And this is really, truly fireside chat. We have some ideas we share, but we really would love to hear from you. Where are you at with motivation? What brought you to the, what motivated you to come to this <laughs> call when motivation fails? And now you can unmute yourself and respond however you yeah. want to respond to that. Can you relate to this? What, what's, what's your question? What are your questions? Where, what is your curiosity about it? I feel that I have a lot of motivation in the sense that I get things done, but I always have something holding me back. And that motivation comes from fear of failing, a fear of um, not excelling at uh, the best of my ability. Mm -hmm. um, so this is what's drawing me towards this because I do feel I have quite a bit of motivation. Like my life is fantastic. I've got great things. You know what I mean? I just can't get myself to get to that one spot. I built everything around it but it's just sitting there still and I still haven't gotten to where I need to go. Does that is make that, sense? Is that a, an actual concrete thing, that spot, or is that more like a, a sense in your body? Um, feeling wise, I'm not there. Motivation, feeling everything there mentally, emotionally, I'm not there, but I have everything already set up physically. 
Um, I do have, a, I, I purchased a home. So I have my base of everything. I just can't get myself to get there. Something's holding me back. So. You came to the right call. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Oops. Got to turn off your phone. <laughs> now you know her ringtone. Yeah. I really resonate with what Amy just said. Um, I kind of feel that same way in my life right now, like where I have a lot of the foundational pieces in order, but I'm still not like quite ready to to jump to that next level, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that's why I came as well. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? <laughs> Go for it. Raina, she's gonna sing it. Do you I, wanna... I'm not motivated these days. You're not motivated? No, I don't know why. There are certain things that come real easy and there are certain things that I feel I need to do but I'm just not doing them right great mm -hmm. good point so thank you and you're not happy with that you're not happy to be just a couch potato um Sometimes I am. <laughs> the jazz and all that is very a lot of fun, especially in winter time. <laughs> yeah. But you know, um, there are things that I'm not attending to. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any, any, yeah. I'm using at times. I'm using age as a excuse for not being motivated right yeah. you can't tell from this picture but i'm not 21. <laughs> <laughs> All right uh-huh hey cool yeah we will look in the yeah interesting thank you mm -hmm. okay that's cool yeah. yeah yeah as she said Next. <laughs> Who's next? <laughs> Who would like to share what's up for them and what you'd like to maybe get out of tonight? I don't feel like I'm particularly as motivated this year. And I also made the demand that I actually have more downtime this year. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm going into, <laughs> into judgment that I'm not motivated to work as hard in my business as what I have in the last several years. And yeah, I've been just having more play time and more me time and more downtime. Mm -hmm. And that's fun. And then I'm also judging it that I'm not, while my business is status, well, status quo and growing very slowly, <laughs> but I'm judging that, oh, I should be doing a whole lot better in my business because mm -hmm. I don't feel terribly motivated. Yeah. It's yeah. just like, yeah, everything's okay, so I'm happy, so why bother? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not motivated to take it to the next level. Okay. Mm -hmm. It sounds like there's a theme, yeah. Anyone else? I'm, I'm uh, familiar with the not motivated, and I have to admit right now that is not an issue for me. <laughs> I like hold the torch. <laughs> yeah. There's so much going on that it's almost like I cannot not be motivated because <laughs> I have too much, to some extent, too much fun. Sometimes there wow. are things where uh, do I have to do this, but it doesn't last that long. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But I'm I'm very familiar with not being motivated. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. we might pick your brain a bit later. <laughs> Anyone else want to share what's up with them? And we can also do that during the call. Yeah. It's just, just an opening of, hey, what's the energy? What are you guys curious about? What questions do you have? Cool. Okay. So, I mean, we, we played with this... Um, 
elusive energy almost of motivation quite a bit because we have made some big changes as Juna said in the last year and we kept hitting those spots where yeah we had everything that we require to create something great and run with our business but we didn't mm-hmm. <laughs> right mm-hmm. so that's where we started being more curious. What is this actually? And then we talked to a lot of you. You guys can hear the heating going I'm, on. I'm going to just turn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's in there. So we talked a lot of. Uh, no, we can't hear it. Hear it. We can't hear it if you need it on. Okay, it's in that in that yeah, thing. It's just the heater in the house. We're in the basement. Sorry for that. Um, so. And we heard from a lot of you that the same thing, either, hey, I'm just not able to just do that one thing that I know would turn everything into it actually happening and not quite, and also just spending lots of time in, in nothingness, right? So just space and being not, not quite sure what to do. So that really is the, was the ticker for us to put this fireside chat on. And since then, we have played with it and really saw two different dynamics. So when you feel not motivated, is it that you're looking for motivation in an area that you just don't have any motivation anymore? And I'm not talking to your head right now. Just perceive the energy. Again, what we're doing here is we're entertaining you with the words and we're playing with the energy. So you don't need to analyze what we're saying. (laughs) So can you ask that question again? So again, when you lack motivation, is it partly because you're looking for it in a place that it doesn't exist anymore? Mm. So what happens in this moment in time, like we have talked so much about, is we're really living in the liminal. Times are changing and consciousness is changing rather dynamically. So when you look into the past of humankind, motivation was often based in gaining an identity, creating a life for yourself, and based really in rules and regulations and have tos and shoulds, yada yada yada, right? And that that you would you would have a reason to do your work or a reason to make money. Like there was always based in a reason or an external factor to be to have your identity in mm-hmm. life. So. For example, we identified ourselves both as coaches and facilitators. And somehow that didn't motivate us anymore, even though we we adore you guys and we love people and we love being with people. Mm -hmm. But that role of being a facilitator didn't have the same oomph anymore that actually motivated us to do anything. And yet when we tried to create new things, we kept going back to the old role as if it would, you know, I don't know, as if it would do something for us, something magical. And yeah, so it didn't. It it didn't. (laughs) Yeah. So do you get that being motivated out of the need to identify with something? Yes. Like to do something, to achieve a goal, right? Like why else would you need to be motivated unless you're achieving a goal or um, going somewhere, doing something? Kind of feels like you're being a lazy ass otherwise. And perceive how the judgments are coming in with that. And for us too, right? Well, we better find something else then, right? I'm going to be the orange picker in Florida. (laughs) Yeah, like you got to do something. (laughs) And even that didn't have any charge anymore. So we just, it's like, it was like the space of. Mm -hmm. So. And, and I mean, I, what I thought of this morning, I mean, this, this 
motivation through identity is so ingrained in us that I mean you can see it in the way that we give people last names or have given people last names right? it's like the, the the last names often were associated with who they were right you go to the you go, like the Miller yeah right or or Peterson, Johnson, the son of John, the son of Peter, who are you related to? It's always a connection point to your identity, not really who you are. So in some of our classes, we've been talking about your, the character that you play or the role that you play and how we over-identify with it. And if you're over-identified with a role or you're wearing a costume or playing a character, you have to live by motivation and you have to judge yourself when you're not motivated and you're not accomplishing things. So a lot of motivation in this world is based in judgment mm -hmm. and you have to have reasons for things and explain yourself to people. It's pretty heavy. It's pretty mm -hmm. challenging. So, so just check out for a moment if you ha are looking for that motivation in that identity identifying or in that reason like what Kim was saying with her business I kind of should but I don't want to and it's like identifying with that or um, who was talking was it Annie, Annie, Annie and uh, Eric yeah. yeah you have everything in a in the setup but now that final thing is do you have somewhere in there like an outer motivation that is not really you. And thus you can't really find the oomph, the, the everything that it takes to actually make that seed totally pop and come to fruition. Hmm. I never really thought of that actually. Um, I really don't try to identify, but I do feel like, the other person said a worthless piece of shit if I don't, pardon my language, if I don't do something about my motivation. If I'm sitting there and I know that I have all that time, I'm like, there should be something that I should be doing. And, but I'm not identifying anything. I'm just constantly judging myself. So I, I never thought about it that way. Mm -hmm. So when you're judging yourself, so have you then identified that you are the one that should, but never will? Is there a different way of explaining that? Yeah. <laughs> like you should be doing more. You should be getting yeah. that thing done because in, in the past you had such joy about it and you just knew this is what you want to do and this is what you want to do, but you can't because Probably. you're a loser, you're a lazy ass, you're a whatever. That's all the judgments that come in. Does that mm. make sense? I just yeah. I'm constantly always trying to prove myself. So yes, absolutely. That's exactly what it means yeah mm -hmm. and in the past that have might have given you even the the oomph to create something mm -hmm. but yeah i mean that that used to yeah i guess the dreams that i had set up for myself was all written on pieces of paper and i've gotten them all done but there are other things that i want to accomplish but they're not as appealing to me anymore like i want to get it done because i feel like it's it's something that i want to do but i but I'm not motivated to do it because maybe again, like you'd said, maybe it's something in the past that motivated me. Now it doesn't. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really great question to ask yourself too. Is this, is this still mine? Do I still choose this? And for a lot of people who are like stubborn and hard headed, it's like, no, I said, I'm going to do it and I'm going to fucking do it. Right. It's written down. <laughs> right. So it's, I wrote it on a piece of paper. I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Yes. An aspect of that for me is also uh, fear of success. Yeah. Ah, yeah. I like that one. Self doubt. Self doubt. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. So who, am I, who am I to go ahead and do this? Who am I to present this? I know I'm good. Why do I have to prove it to anybody? Do I have to prove it to anybody? But what am I? What am I depriving? other um, by shining my own light mm -hmm. right so oh, interesting. what are you depriving others of by shining your own and light myself 
No. Of course. Yeah. I, I was I was going in my head, who are you depriving others, uh, what are you depriving others for, about or for if you don't? <laughs> Mm -hmm. but yeah. like again perceive that dynamic how much are you bouncing off what you have identified as outside of you yeah right this is this is functioning from motivations as separation yeah and that doesn't work anymore like i mean it does work for a lot of people And it will work for a long time for a lot of people, but those of us who are choosing to live a different lifestyle and also be a little bit of wave maker in this time of the liminal and the evolutionary shift, that power to be motivated by an external source, no matter whether you want to identify with it or you're bouncing yourself back as in the outside has something that's more valuable than you. Or, or even being a rebel, like yeah. resisting something, like, and how much do you set it up for yourself? And then you resist your own self. And then it just becomes this crazy game that spins you into doing nothing. I mean, for me, that was a long time. That's how I lived my life. Somebody told me I can't do it. It's like, uh -huh. watch me do it. Mm -hmm. Right. But even that is not really working. It works a little bit, but. <laughs> <laughs> so being motivated by the outside. So does that get, does does did you get the energy of like being motivated by either fulfilling a role or um, being a, a character like the rebel or the pleaser or um, the goody two shoes or the facilitator or the artist or something the hero. like that? Yeah, anything. right. Or the one that always has regard to for other people. We have thousands of roles right the free-spirited one the yada 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 can you relate to that energy yeah yeah so what if we shifted that to being motivated what by what you actually desire I have a question. Yeah. How do you figure out what you actually desire? If this is what you wanted for so long and all of a sudden it's just, it's there at your fingertips, but it's not exactly what you want anymore because you have it. Mm -hmm. So, yes. and, and that's exactly that dynamic because as long as you look for that motivation outside of yourself, you're attached to whatever it is you attached it to. But when you base it in your desire and your, talents and abilities and what you're really good at is being you things in the outer change sometimes very dynamically and you realize wow that book was so yesterday mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. i mean it's, it's being willing to let go of of those dreams maybe and just to really ask okay what is true for me now where do i what lights me up and i mean this is a question this is for so many people they don't know what they want that's why also we put the on this call they don't know what they want they don't know where to put their energy and this is apart from looking externally as to what you can do out there to going within yourself and saying what do i do naturally you know when i'm living my life where where does my energy just sort of naturally flow Mm -hmm. and start following that and that becomes kind of an adventure of living and then you get inspired along the way that's how we've been unfolding our life in the last little bit it's been really exciting so it's a whole different way of listening within yourself does that make sense makes a lot of sense yeah mm -hmm. and one of the things i think with um that whole willing to let it go like willing to drop it and that's not a bad thing like mm -hmm. letting something go you can if it's really real and it, it sticks you can always pick it up again does that yeah. i understand yeah. okay so and it's also that dynamic 
with that, how much have you built your, your dream and that what you thought you want to do around that particular thing? So you build all your energy, you put it, like place it around it. You build your life around that thing, mm -hmm. right? You build your life around whatever your project is, whatever your desire is, whatever your business is. It kind of goes bloop. And what if you took you and placed you right in the middle of that? I'd be happy. <gasps> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> right? You, you probably wouldn't succeed in the society's norms. But it might Which is why I live the way I live. <laughs> well, uh, I'm just thinking of something like, what if you stopped you know, doing and going toward the goal because it's like that end point and you haven't dreamed beyond it. Right. Okay. So, so you never, you keep um, procrastinating and not getting motivated because, okay, that's like the one next hurdle. And a couple of you have talked about like the next hurdle, you know, you could do that hurdle in the next couple of days, the mm -hmm. next week, the next month you'd be done. And then what? And that fear of the then what and that big open space is a lot of what people are terrified for. And that's why they go and look to the externals instead of like going within. Like that's going exactly within, it. Frightening. Bing. Bing. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's exactly that. It's exactly of not knowing what's further for me. And because I know I can I can get that goal. And in a second, like you had mentioned, I got this. No problem. Yeah. But as soon as I get there, what else? You're right. Absolutely. And, and what we have found is that there is a level of intimacy that most people are terrified to go to. Intimacy with themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also standing up for that. Like, I always say the beauty on this planet is diversity. No matter what you do, you will make somebody very, very happy. You will piss some people off. And some people, most people actually would, will not notice you at all, right? There are always these th three kinds of people. So whom are you playing with? Like what Dee was saying, hey, what, how do I harm someone? And who am I to do that or deprive someone, right? But you will, because that's part of the beauty on this planet, that we have this playground of diversity, that we can play with each other to the extent of, hey, if I need to play a certain game, I will pick my players that will deliver me exactly with that. And how that, that creation, that game kind of lost its oomph a little bit is that we started placing our creations outside of ourselves instead of really in living a life that's true to us okay and you cannot do that if you identify with anything other than you and that doesn't have a role that doesn't have a character a costume any of that so i'm going to ask you all a question so if you were living true to you with that next hurdle that next thing that you've been mo not motivated to do what would you choose? If you were really being you in that particular situation, what do you choose? And just go with this moment, what, what do you choose? And what does that create for you? So if I were being me and you wanna be you in this moment, not the character, not the role, not the super achiever, you're none of that anymore. So no if, rebels. Yep. If I were being true to me in this moment, what do I choose? And then am I willing to lower my barriers and start receiving from it as well as creating it? And I'm going to actually add another <laughs> twist to this because I always find this when somebody says to me, what do you choose? It works to some extent. But a lot of times I go, I have no idea. So what I would like to 
throw into the mix is that desire, that yummy feeling inside of you that you have when you just do things naturally. Like for me, I'm a natural know-it-all. <laughs> Can you tell? <laughs> she doesn't have to play a role. She just is that. <laughs> I try. <laughs> I really suck at it. <laughs> so no matter where you put me with people, if somebody asks me a question, I just know. And I often don't, haven't even necessarily thought about it or anything. Yeah. I just have somewhere read something or something and it just comes through me. And it's something that I love being, I love being a contribution to people in that way and helping mm -hmm. people shift perspective. That's just what I'm good at. And that is, uh, that's something that I truly also desire to be that contribution in that way. I don't necessarily go and choose that. I be that. Right. And when I be that energy, then suddenly our business started unfolding in a total different way again. Even though we're still being here with you and I'm still a know-it-all, but it's not out of that role of a facilitator. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? And it's, it's those things that are easy for you when mm -hmm. you have ease with something. And it's usually something that you don't even notice in yourself. Like we were talking about that today and Sabina said about me that she sees that whenever I'm with people, I'm just a natural connector. I love connecting people and I know this person could help this person over here. And I'm just, I'm communicating with them. She says, yeah, if we're walking in the woods and nobody's there and then suddenly there's a woman sitting on a, a rock, I will approach her and talk with her. This is not theory. She actually does that. She did that several times. <laughs> so Sabina's like, who are you talking to? And I'm like, this person you're sitting there who needs to be listened to. <laughs> so there's things that, and they're not necessarily noticed by this reality. They're these kind of qualities that we are naturally. So if you have a friend in the world who can look at you and, and let you know what do you do naturally? It's very helpful. Or I like to play the game of imagining that you're beamed onto a planet or a different country where all your basic needs are met and you're, the only requirement for you is to be a contribution, nothing else. And that can be also by being a really good asshole. Right? It's your choice. But really perceive what would you do naturally? What do you do naturally when you come into a new situation? What if you're not really good with people? What if you're just good no. at being nothing? Just that, like, you know, yes. just, just like going in the woods and just being nothing. What if it's just that? Yes. But is that actually true? <laughs> or would you, no matter where you are, always create something, fiddle with something and just improve things? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Just because we relate to people doesn't mean that you guys do. Yeah. But it's it's being willing to be truly like true lovers, mm -hmm. being intimate with each other, that you're intimate and caring with yourself to find those things out. I have the suspicion that the next phase that we're diving into is the gift of us actually diving into those juicy gifts, talents, abilities, magic, whatever you want to call it, and finding out what is my taste of it, what is my feel of it, what is my sound, my, what are my colors, mm -hmm. and start playing with it. What if your biggest contribution and biggest fulfillment can lay in you being you and starting to really living a life true to you, not motivated by external things? or things that you should or shouldn't do, but by things that actually let your heart laugh. Yeah, it's just, you know, how we've been so motivated by um, punishment and reward, like avoiding punishment as growing up and trying to get the reward. Those two things is kind of the sum total of motivation, how it, how it has been.
-hmm. and if it could be more like this. Mm -hmm. So would that, mm -hmm. how does that feel for you to just, if your job, serious job, <laughs> was to be lovers with you and find out what do you truly desire and then fulfill those desires? Have you ever seen Lucifer, the show Lucifer? He's the devil. He's on my list. He's devilishly handsome and he looks into people's eyes and he says, tell me, what do you truly desire? <laughs> and then all these people just spill the beans to him, right? <laughs> they just give him everything. <laughs> what do you truly desire? You have to just see Lucifer once just to see him ask that question. <laughs> so... I'm totally resonating with every single thing you're saying. And that's like exactly the energy that I'm searching for. But there's still that element of like the self doubt and the stop energy. So mm -hmm. I'm curious, like, do you have any advice of like, even just taking like the first step like that? I feel like I can't even take that first step. So is that actually true? It's not true, but it's something about it just, so that stop in, energy is just do you have in your head a timeline yeah like a timeline the way it's supposed to look um uh, mm -hmm. like so when you when you take pictures eric is a great photographer and much more that i have no clue of but i know <laughs> that you take great pictures um when you take a foot uh, a picture are you just in the flow and you take it when the time is right yeah, that's, so that, that was like my passion for the longest time. And I, I'm feeling like a shift out of that. And that's where I'm saying like, to take that next step towards something else, I guess. What I want you to perceive mm -hmm. is that I, for myself, I have put tremendous treasure, pressure on me and on Juna because I had a timeline in my head and I was not, really being aware of what actually was possible in the moment mm -hmm. and I was pushing it. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Like forcing it. Exactly. Yeah. So my question to you is, are you, are you really actually aware that now is not the time yet? I, yeah, there's definitely an element of that too. Like, like, not that I need to be more prepared, but like that wouldn't hurt to, or even like you said, to like just play with it and see kind of where the road leads. Like mm -hmm. start playing with these energies and choosing these new desires that, that I haven't even really truly hashed out what they would look like or even what they feel like. So that I'm trying to get into that, like visualizing and stuff and see what kind of comes up. And and go beyond visualizing, be it. Mm -hmm. Like really ooze those and have fun. Like truly, instead of putting on a character or a costume, let it ooze from within you. Mm -hmm. And really be that. Does that? Yeah. Of... And something else that just was coming to me is um, for for you eric or anyone else is if you're like not jumping over that hurdle is there someone else in your life that if you became greater than them they would be hurt or pissed off or something like that like Definitely. you know you can achieve your next greatest level but you hold yourself back is i don't know if that's with you eric or yeah, that reads for sure okay mm -hmm. and and again this is like also what i said what d brought up is to be really living your best is the aware only possible if you're aware that diversity is our strength i'm pretty sure that all of you believe in diversity right mm -hmm. anybody not <laughs> variety is a spice of life right <laughs> If you, if you don't believe in that, I think you're on the wrong call. <laughs> wrong channel. Turn the channel. <laughs> so, but what we don't acknowledge is that diversity is not just pretty in pink. It includes upsetting people. It includes making life hard for other people. Maybe not intentionally, but just by the nature of this diversity, 
that's part of it. And that's often why we're not willing to be that intimate with ourselves because we only want to see the good stuff, right? We don't want to see the crappy stuff. And to say, yeah, I mm. contributed to that person's life and it was very hard for them with the same strength and clarity and caring as, yep, yeah, I changed that person's life by contributing something to them and mm. made it all 100% better. Mm. Do you get that balance of, it doesn't really matter what it creates. What matters is that you're living it and you're living it true to you. I say that again. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you create. This is the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> it really doesn't matter what mm. you create. Your contribution is you being true to you. That juiciness. What I have an issue with is being true to myself, but also feeling as if I'm being very selfish in that matter. So if I'm going to be above and beyond this person, but I'm tearing them down in some sense, so to speak, I feel selfish, even though I'm doing it for me. But you're not above and beyond that person. Okay. Right. You can, this, this can, uh, you're just present with what is required in this moment. And there are tons of Zen stories out there where the monk does weird stuff. It looks like it's horrible, but at the end, it's actually a huge contribution. And I'm not giving this as a, just, a justification to be an asshole. I'm giving that as an invitation to get over yourself to want to protect the whole world. Yeah. You cannot. You cannot protect anyone. It's not possible. I mean, you, yes, you can on some level, but ultimately you're not going to create somebody else's outcreate or change anybody else's creation that they choose and they're here to explore. Do you get that? Mm -hmm. You also cannot change um, how you are in the world and how others perceive you. We had a perfect example. Um, a gentleman came back to us after 18 years, we had no idea who he was. I mean, we see hundreds of people every year. And he said, you've changed my life. I just wanted to come back and thank you. He'd driven all the way from Philadelphia, all the way up to Wyerton, just to tell us that we had changed his life. And, uh, wow. Beautiful. And said, what? What did we do? <laughs> well, you were just you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. nice and and that can actually then um, unfold like i was playing with the dogs the other day in a field throwing a ball and it's it's an open field and our dogs sometimes get a bit shy with other dogs and i just had that hunch okay it's done now even though they were not quite done but i just had that mm, okay time to put them on the leashes and head out and while I was heading out, two huge other dogs came independently, came in and wanted to play. And I thought, wow, what if we all lived like that? To trust ourselves, our awareness, and knowing to the extent that we don't even have to be cognitively aware of why we're doing something. That's mm -hmm. when you're in the flow. So what would it be like if you trusted yourself, like Eric, if you trusted your awareness for the timing, Sonia, I'm going to get to you in a minute. What if you trusted your awareness with timing and the flow that you didn't even have to be cognitively aware of what it actually is so you don't have to plan as such? Yeah, I think that's a lot of where that stopping is coming from is needing to know what it looks like or having this plan or and not just following the energy of what I would actually like to do. So, I and does that live between your ears? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> mm -hmm. I so, have yeah. quite an example of um, being on the road with Tom, and um, I read to him when he is driving, and for 
no apparent reason. I looked up and I saw something on the road that he did not see. And because something spoke to me, just like you with the dogs, I said, look out, there's something on the road and we avoided an accident. So there is a greater knowing, a greater understanding if you are but willing to listen. Sorry, I interrupted. No, that's fine. But that's exactly what we're talking about. We want to control with our identity and with our mind so much that we don't allow that knowing. And Sonia. Sonia. Go for it. Um, yeah, for me, um, I'm sort of getting about the identity thing um, because I seem to have many roles um, one of them is that I'm the baby of the family I grew up in and um, my siblings are way older than me and then there was me. And it's interesting because um, I have a brother and a sister that are 10 and 13 years older than me and it's almost like my role in the family is to always make sure that I didn't do so well, that I'm not doing very well um, financially, that sort of thing, because um, it's almost as if if I actually became successful, it would almost displace my brother and my sister's roles who have always been the well-to-do ones. Um, and then I've got the other role of being a mother of three. So it's almost like, okay, um, all right, I need to be there for the kids as well, but I... It, it's just so much, um, like it's like trying to find me has been the issue because then with the things that I can do, like growing up, I was also very good at doing a lot of different things and I liked a lot of different things. So I could never seem to choose something to sort of focus on. So this is kind of bringing a lot of information. So I guess my question is how... Um, how can I grasp myself or how can, what are some tools or something where like, like that other lady was saying about, we're not feeling like I'm a selfish bitch and, um, and, and trying to focus on just me, even though I have all these responsibilities to everybody else, mainly my children, the responsibility side, but then the role is obviously in the family and, in the larger family as well. Mm -hmm. So I just, I just want to say a quick thing before I know you're going to say something. <laughs> Marvin. Um, just notice where, you know, the roles that you're playing are the biggest um, ways to excuse yourself from choosing for you and having you right. It's, it's easy to say, um, but this is how I am in my family with my brothers and sisters. I, I should be this way. It's, it's, and this is the way motivation works is it's full of excuses. Why and why not? So just that you can hear that in yourself is a beginning. And then to choose for you and to be you, it's, it's a deep choice of a, of a commitment to, am I worth it? And truth, are you worth it to live your life in your way like nobody else can? Like, why are you here if it's not you being you, right? True, yeah. Mm -hmm. So how, how can you be the mostest you and really divest yourself of the roles? And I know you, you have a commitment to be your children's mom and really exploring how, how does that play out? Like, where am I choosing for me? And I remember you on the first fireside chat is how can I have me and, you know, be all of this but you're actually choosing to be that that mother that that cares for her kids mm -hmm. and how it feeds you as well and and that's that's exactly what I was pondering as well is within all of that do you have an awareness for other people and a caring yes yeah. I tend to um I tend to be one of these social type people that um like I'll make friends with I don't know somebody standing in the um checkout line at the shops I will start chatting to 
whoever, um, whenever, um, and don't have any problem with that. So, so um, per perceive that energy. Mm -hmm. Right? Can you, can you, like, does that make you eat more of you when you do that? Yeah, yeah. Fair. I do. I, I feel like I light up more when I'm with people. So, mm -hmm. so that's exactly the energy that you follow. Right. And again, this is the beauty of this planet that everybody has their unique superpowers. And you get to discover exactly those where you do that. Like you naturally care for people, you connect people, you make them feel better. Right. Yeah. You might yeah. be a networker, you might be uh, more of a broker. You like, and then start asking, okay, what else could I do with this? That would be fun. And the amazing thing is, when you put your attention to that, that you, you, your life starts suddenly delivering you more possibilities with scenarios in which you can actually live that even more. Yeah, so you start acknowledging it and then it, the desire to be that even grows. So this is like following that desire within rather than going to the externals and trying to figure out your life follow that mm. that joy bubble that that you get from just caring for people or talking with them and like that's it's such a gift like everybody on this call has not just one of these you have multiple 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 gifts and it it takes a while to see them because we're it's not tap dancing it's not being an artist it's not you know <laughs> being an engineer it's it's different it's different kinds of skills and different capacities and that's the challenge that we don't have any more a hook that we can hang our hat on we just uh the, our challenge in this time and age is to be us to live lives true to us not to be a a, a butcher a carpenter a miller a whatever right to be that without any definition and we're making yeah. ways and also thank you for bringing up your kids again because every time you talk about your three kids how can you not say that you're a huge success <laughs> yeah i guess yeah this society doesn't really value that side of it does it yeah it, but and do you yeah that, that is an important thing for me yeah and like it's it's crucial that even though nobody might see you in this that mm. you acknowledge you yeah right and just give yourself a pat on the shoulder because mm. perceive when somebody acknowledges you how much does that turn you on yeah, it does. Right? It makes I, you feel that whatever you're doing is like more worthwhile. Mm -hmm. That you're doing something in this world. Yeah. That's and, the value, I guess. Exactly. And the challenge with mm -hmm. being um, the ones that are riding the front wave, or maybe even being the wave makers, is that there are not many people who can see you. So that acknowledgement is often rare or comes, ooh, how many years was it? 23 years, 18 years for Tom and Dee later, <laughs> right? So yeah. this is kind of where we have to have each other's back and our own back as well to really take a moment in time on a regular basis to say, hey, yay. Yeah. And I just want to say too, like, we are the wave makers and the front runners. And, you know, if you're the oldest in the kid in the family, you had that experience. She's the youngest. I know. But if other, other people, it's no wonder you have some self doubt, right? We, we're going into uncharted territory. We're in uncharted territory. And so the confidence has to come <laughs> from within to trust yourself, to listen, to be really open and aware and alert and to take one step, take another step with that awareness and that joy and really go with 
what lights you up and what is what is easy for you where does it flow and if your head tells you that you don't know what lights you up you tell yeah. your head thank you for sharing <laughs> and it's time to shut up right? <laughs> and then tune into that 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 whatever you do naturally yeah. And even if it is breathing or eating, <laughs> eating bonbons on the couch, if you're good at that, tune into that energy. Be the best couch potato ever. That could be your special <laughs> gift to the world. Or the best whiner ever, right? <laughs> I know so many people who are experts in whining, but they're really getting a kick up out of it. And what is underneath there is actually they're huge, amazing storytellers. <laughs> I was just kind of getting this energy of like um, that we need to be paid for these things that light us up. And I, when she talked about like going in the woods and you know, like if that lights you up, you don't necessarily need to get paid for it. If it's still your, your joy or your passion, then it's still a contribution to you. That And I'm look, thinking of my like landscape photography and that's like my, by far my favorite. And I don't think I've ever sold one picture, but that's where I get the most feedback of people. Like you said, I'm a good photographer and I'm guessing it's because you saw that those type of images. And that's where I really enjoy the most is being in nature, seeing a beautiful sunset or landscape. And so, yeah, just cause, and so now I'm starting to see that as a value to myself. It doesn't mean that just cause I'm not getting paid for it. It doesn't matter. So. Thank you for that awareness. Mm -hmm. And the, I mean, questions that we ask ourselves too is what other, you know, where other streams can money come to us, right? Because mm -hmm. of what we love to do, it might be just lying on our back in the woods and just enjoying nature. Who's going to pay us for that? Well, that's a really great question. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I used to, what, one thing that I did who was going to pay me to dance? I was a social worker and working my ass off. And then I decided to, to start dancing, but I thought, well, nobody's going to pay me for that. I'll have to be a stripper or something. <laughs> and no, I, I made a career for 10 years dancing and teaching other people how to dance. And how cool was that? Like and this really is, following that. This is then often where I notice that people are not willing to be that intimate with that because it takes the, mind out of charge mm. right? with your landscape photography how intimate how much more intimate are you willing to be and actually let your life show you what else is possible with it or other areas right did you get that energy yeah like i feel like if i would tr truly choose that and pursue that with the energy of just being in it that eventually someone would either want to buy it or you know like a gallery space might open up or something. And then if I'm following that energy, like you said, these new th new doors are going to open mm -hmm. that I didn't know were even there. So, But your mind can't control <laughs> it. And the point is you can also not just see this, right? You need to see all of it and be all of it. Yeah. The good, the bad, the ugly, and the beautiful. Mm -hmm. There's a rawness and an intimacy which brings forth a different kind of motivation. It's almost not motivation at all, but it does not come out of judgment or have tos or shoulds, but it comes out of you being you so fully and delightfully that you're just turned on all the time. You don't need motivation because you're turned on. It's, it's like living inspired rather than having to be motivated. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> any more questions i'm time aware so was this helpful for you guys is there anything yeah. else we can contribute to you on this adventure of being motivated or not motivated <laughs> Did I'm, i'm just wondering will you send out the recording yeah, we, we will, uh, say, we put all the video and the recordings onto the um, membership page and we'll send you a link to it because the recordings often are too big.
So okay. you can just go there, download yeah. it, or we watch it We don't send again. it in an email anymore. We send it to, or we will send an email. We send we'll send you, an email yeah. with the, the link. <laughs> with the link. Does that make sense? And you guys, yeah. you don't have to download it even anymore. We made it so that you can just listen right on the web. Because a lot of people use their phone. So you don't want to download it on your phone. You can just play it on your phone. And if you want to keep it, you can download it too. We have like three different options for you. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you'll, you'll get that within, what, next 24 hours? Yeah. Cool. Yes. I don't hear you, Tom. I see you move your lips. <laughs> there you go. Um, can you listen? Yes. Now I can hear you. Okay. You're on holidays. Relax. Chill. Enjoy. Or else. We love you. <laughs> <laughs> we love you too <laughs> any last minute things let me put the yeah put the whole gallery I'll view gallery view on thank you so much for coming and uh, playing with us tonight we hope that you got something out of it and we certainly did it's awesome to know that you're not alone if you're not motivated um, you're not a total failure um, <laughs> that there are some strategies and some different ways of looking at yourself and life. And it's really about living that true to you life. Mm -hmm. So thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time at the fireside chat where the mystical meets the practical. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thanks thank for you. being you. Thanks. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs>